Hello everyone and welcome to our Sunday evening Bible class and we are studying uh, happiness, uh, how to be happy, how to become happy, uh, um, things along this line. Uh, it, it just seems like uh, we are all kind of gloomy with everything that has that is going on and and so uh, I just felt like after I preached the Sermon on Happiness that we just needed to continue our thought process uh, on joy and happiness. And I want to give it a few more minutes to um, some more folks join us on Facebook Live. Uh, I just got a, a, a notice from the weather service just a little bit ago that uh, they're expecting a pretty bad storm to come through here beginning around midnight and not ending till sometime around noon tomorrow. And uh, the weather channel is predicting 8 to 12 inches of snow. Now, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> uh, I know I like snow, but I know that there are a lot of you who do not. And uh, if we do get any kind of uh, snow and you need any kind of items from the store, uh, I have a four-wheel drive, so if you will call me or text me, I will be more than happy to go pick you up whatever you need from the stores, if if they have it and if at all possible. All right, well, we've had a few more that have joined us, so uh, I want to begin this lesson by asking the very simple question of um, what is it that brings joy to your life? I need to bring this. There we go. I was getting a little dark here. Uh, what? What things that that happen in your life that brings you complete happiness? And and uh, I want us to look at two verses before we really get deep into our lesson. The first verse I want to look at is what we we uh, the two that we looked at last week toward the end of our lesson. I want to look at Psalm Psalm chapter sixteen and verse eleven, where the psalmist writes. You make known to me the path of your of life. In the presence, uh, oh, excuse me. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Another text I would like for us to consider is Romans chapter fifteen and verse thirteen, where uh, Paul is writing, "May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace." In believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. You know, sometimes it's the things that, uh, uh, when we're unhappy, those that's the thing that prevents us from moving forward as a Christian. And you know, when we look at that last phrase in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Um, it could be that. The you know of course the scripture is going to help us uh, live our life, but the scriptures can also bring us peace and joy and happiness. But it also will help us in our hope. And if we're not happy, if we're not joyful, or if, they, if we allow the things that uh, are are around us to come down on us and remove the joyfulness that or the joy that we're supposed to have in this life as a Christian. Uh, that can take away our our hope, our hope for for life everlasting in heaven. So, just something to think about there. But going back to the question that I asked, what are the things that uh, pre, uh, produce or bring us joy? And uh, some of the things that I've listed, um, I, I put down the birth of children. Um, I can remember the very moment that. Uh, Stephen was put in my arms when he was born, and I remember looking down at him and and just in awe, I guess you may say, but uh, the happiness that was filling my heart. I didn't want to give him up. Uh, I was allowed to carry him to the nursery, and the nurses in the nursery just said, as long as you want to hold him and rock him, you go right ahead. And I remember sitting in that chair, that rocking chair in the nursery, just just rocking my son. My heart just 
beaming with joy and pride at, that I have a son. And, you know, and not to out, not to stop there, but when Jessica was born, the same thing happened. My, my heart was just overfilled with joy. And so the birth of a children can definitely um, bring joy to us. The... Uh, the uh, the birth of grandchildren, you know, I, I've been blessed with having to, uh, to have four grandchildren uh, come in, in my life and Nancy's life, and it just brings us joy. And especially when my grandchildren call me on on Facetime, and and they they scream out my name, G Paul, and then uh, Nancy is there, G Mama, and, and 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 just to see the happiness, the the smiles and the laughter. See, these are the things that kind of bring me joy to my to my life. Um, another thing that brings joy to my life is when someone decides to obey the gospel. Uh, there's nothing more joyful than a person saying, I, I was lost, and, and I want to do what is right and become that child of God. And that brings joy to me. You know, we're told that the angels in heaven um, rejoice at the one sinner who repents. So, uh, you know, somebody who obeys the gospel, that's something that I'm very joyful of. Um, I'm, I'm joyful every Sunday that we get the opportunity to, uh, the privilege, it's not really so much as the opportunity as it is the privilege to come together and, and worship our God and to thank God for what He has given us and what He, he does for us. Uh, you know, sometimes maybe we think that that Sundays is all about worshiping God, and, and that is true. But, you know, it, it's joyful that we can go to, to worship and say, Thank you, God. You make, you make me complete. My heart is happy. Um, the psalmist wrote once, uh, I was glad when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Or I think I'm just kind of prayer-phrasing there a little bit. But, but um, being able to, to worship God and to... Uh, thank God for what He does just brings joy to my heart. Uh, my wife, my wife brings me joy. Um, even though sometimes we, you know, just like every couple, you have these little um, disagreements, <laughs> and that's the best way to put it. Um, she still brings joy to my life. Uh, so, um, how about uh, your birthday? Does your birthday bring joy to your life? Now, I know what some of you are saying. No, nope, I don't like getting older. Oh, really? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, <laughs> as long as you're alive, you're going to get older, okay? And, and so, uh, what about your birthday? And think about this. When somebody remembers your birthday, doesn't that bring joy to your your uh, your heart and a smile to your face when you you go to the mailbox and you open up the the, the cover and you you see a card addressed to you and you you know it's a card because of the envelope and you open it up and you see whatever someone wrote about you or wrote to you and that brings joy to you and the thing about it when we have joy and we have happiness um, that brings us a sense of peace now, I know we have peace when we're living that Christian life, and we should have peace. But to be happy brings us a sense of peace. And, and, and that's something that is, you can't put an amount of money on. Peace and happiness. Um, what about uh, the blessing of being saved, or of salvation? You know, uh, uh, David, when he had sinned with uh, Bathsheba and and he is writing his prayer, or his prayer is recorded in Psalm 51, the prayer that he prayed to God. And uh, I'm reminded of uh, verse 12 where, where uh, David wrote, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. You know, I, I guess David, when he was told that he had sinned, when when he was told uh, that he was guilty of of the the murder of uh, Uriah and the cover up of the uh, of the adultery with Bathsheba, and and uh, all these things that trans 
uh, transpired, no doubt that David's heart must have been heavy because he was caught. Now, I, it might have been that uh, David thought, well, I'm the king. Nobody's going to find out about this, but who is the king of kings? God, the, our Lord. And our Lord made it a way for that sin to be found out and sent someone to, to David and approached David with that, uh, the guilt of that sin. And so David was probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And then when he repented of what he did, and we see that prayer of repentance in Psalm 51, he asked God to restore him. You know, I'm sure David felt a little bit better after that prayer, even though he he knew what he had done and he, he may have still felt guilty of it, but he felt a sense of relief because God forgave him and God restored him. And you know, that's the feeling that we can have when we fail God. We can, we can have that feeling of happiness, not that we sinned, not that we, we turned our back on God, but that when we repented of those sins, God restored us to the position that we were at once before. You know, there's nothing greater than the weight of sin off of our shoulders, is it? So, uh, to be restored back to God's good graces is something that we can be happy with. Let's open up our Bibles and let's go over to Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, now, in Acts chapter 8, beginning oh, somewhere around verse 14, um, we have the account, uh, actually, uh, verse 26, actually. Uh, we see that um, we're introduced to a man, an Ethiopian eunuch. And, and the eunuch, we're told in Scripture, is returning from Jerusalem. Uh, he went there to worship. And uh, as he was returning home to Ethiopia... Uh, we're told that uh, Philip was told by an angel of the Lord to go to the chariot, overtake the chariot, and that's exactly what Philip did. He ran to the chariot, and he sees the eunuch, and he's, he's reading uh, uh, Scripture, and he opens up with this uh, statement or this phrase, Do you understand what you're reading? Now, the eunuch must have been a little bit confused, maybe a little bit of uh, heavy-hearted because he's trying to, he's coming back from Jerusalem, going home from worshiping. He's, he's reading scripture. He's trying to understand it. And, and, and he looks at Philip and he says, how can I unless someone comes up and, and teaches me? And so Philip gets in the chariot and he begins to teach the eunuch about Jesus. Now, as they're going along and they're, as they're traveling, um, they come upon a, some water. And the eunuch looks at Philip and he says, Well, here's water. What is hindering me or what's preventing me from being baptized? And, and Philip said, If you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, nothing. And so the eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so the, the, the chariot was commanded to, be st uh, to stop. And the Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water. And Philip baptized the eunuch. He baptized him for the remission of sins. and Because that, that's exactly what Philip was doing back in Samaria before he, uh, before he was told to go to, uh, to this area where the eunuch was. So sometime during the course of, the, of Philip talking to the eunuch, he must have been talking about baptism because the eunuch recognized that the, this water was needed, that the water was there, it was needed to be, to be deep enough to have him immersed, and he asked, what's going to stop me from doing it? And Philip said, you know, nothing. Nothing will prevent you if you just believe with your heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And be obedient to the things. And that obedient act is shown as they both went down to the water. Now, here's what I want you to look at with me. Here's where I want us to concentrate on. Let's begin reading at verse 36. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. 
And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I want you to notice the humbleness of the eunuch. The eunuch was willing to admit that he believed in Jesus. You know, there's something that I put in on our Facebook, the, the church's Facebook page not long ago. Matter of fact, it's just the other day. And uh, it goes something like this. Um, Jesus was crucified in public. And since Jesus was pr crucified in public, should we not live our lives for Jesus in public instead of in secret? It's, it's sort of like that. That's the gist of the idea. But think about that. If Jesus was crucified in, in public, why don't we live our Christian life for Jesus in public where people can see? Oh, sometimes we don't do it. Sometimes we're scared. Sometimes we refuse to. But you know what? The eunuch wasn't. He, he, he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. The Philip baptized. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip so that the eunuch saw him no more, and the eunuch went on his way <laughs> rejoicing. Why was the eunuch so happy? Well, let me suggest to you that the eunuch was happy because someone took the time to show him the Word of God. Someone took the time to introduce the eunuch to Jesus. Someone took the time to, to say, you know, sin is what's separating you from God. And someone took the time to, to take him down and take the confession and, and baptize him in water for the remission of sins. That's why the eunuch went on his way rejoicing is because he finally understood. And he was happy that he did. Let's go over to another passage here in uh, Acts. Go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, and we're going to begin reading um, in verse 30. Now, this is the account of the Philippian jailer. And we, we know what happened. We, we see that uh, Paul and Silas was beaten uh, they were thrown in prison, not only just prison to the inner parts of the prison. They were chained. They were shackled. You know, they, and, and what were they doing? Rejoicing. <laughs> they were happy. They were singing and praising, and, and praising God and praying to Him. And then um, we, we, we remember in this account that an earthquake happened and the chains and the stocks everything on the prisoners fell off but they didn't leave and and the earthquake woke up the jailer and the jailer comes running in and, and he's thinking everybody is gone and everybody escaped and he's ready to kill himself and, and Paul says don't do it we're all here let's start let's pick up reading in verse 30 and the jailer now brought him out and said sirs what must, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and all your, uh, and you will be saved, you and your household. Now, you know, friends, if, if, if that's where the account stopped, then we could say, All right, belief is all that's required. But that's not where the account stopped. Look at verse 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. And he, speaking about the jailer, took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. And when he had brought them into the house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. I asked you to to look at something. I asked you to uh, look at verse 32 again because in verse 31, after the question is asked, what must I do to be saved? And, and the answer was given, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved in your household. Did he say that 
uh, that his household didn't have to believe? No. He was referring to the jailer and everyone in their house. And then the very next verse, we're told that they were teaching them about Jesus. And in teaching about Jesus, they learned what they must do to be saved. And they, when they learned it, they acted upon it. And what was it? They were happy. They rejoiced. Having believed in God. Oh. Salvation definitely brings happiness to our minds, doesn't it? But you know, there's another um, text that comes to mind about what makes us happy. And it kind of goes along with what I preached this morning about things I know. And I know that uh, God is near me. He's always near me. Look at Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. John, Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. Uh, the psalmist writes, You make known the path of life. In the presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That very beginning phrase of this verse lets us know a lot. The psalmist wrote, You make known to me the path of life. In other words, the way that we should live our life. The path, the way of life. And in your presence there's joy. Friends, for the Christian, because we are that Christian, because we obeyed the gospel, because we are doing our best to obey the gospel, we, we can be joyful. We can have that happiness and joy in our, in our life. What about when a person obeys the gospel? When a lost soul uh, obeys and says, you know, I, like the eunuch, I, I want to be baptized for the remission of my sins. I, I believe that Jesus Christ is the, the Son of God. I, I, I am lost and I want to be saved. And Or what about when a person who has left the, the church and wandered back into a life of sin and they make that decision that uh, they want to obey the gospel. How, how do you react to it? You know, back uh, when years ago I remember there was this young man who struggled with Christianity and it seemed like this young man would always respond to the invitation every few weeks and it, it, it got to where there were a few people you could hear the murmuring about it I can't believe that he's responding again I wonder what he keeps doing to to make him have to respond to uh, to the invitation what does it matter? It, has, it, it does not matter what this young man did. He was struggling giving up sin. And he was falling victim to, to temptations. And he knew he was wrong. And he was asking his family, his spiritual family, to pray for him. And ask for God to forgive him. And someone in the audience, if not, and there was more than one, had the nerve to sit there and talk about this young man. This young man had more courage than anyone in there to say, I keep messing up and I need help. When a lost soul obeys the gospel, we should be happy. And it's like I was telling you all ago, I, I didn't quite quote the verse right, but in Luke chapter 15 and verse 10, the Bible says, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You know, last Sunday, I believe it was, if not last Sunday, it was the Sunday before, that we had two obeyed the gospel. Margaret Banner and Charlie Deems both wanted to be baptized for the remission of their sins. Imagine how much joy was going on in heaven. Not because of one, but because of two obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friends, that's exactly what we should do. Rejoice. You know, being at worship, as I've already kind of pointed out, being at worship and and uh, worshiping God with, with uh, our spiritual family should bring happiness to us. In Jeremiah chapter 15, in verse 6, Jeremiah records, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me joy and the delight of my heart. 
You know, there was a preacher that was preaching in a gospel meeting, and, and I'm not going to name his name. You may know him, but it doesn't matter. But he was preaching in a gospel meeting, and uh, he was utilizing his time to, to try to instill the gospel. And uh, it, it was uh, coming close to, toward where the end of the service should have been. But he was still preaching. He was trying to make his point when two teenagers sitting at the back of the building stood up, got his attention, and pointed to their watch like you're, t you're preaching overtime. You know, I've been accused of preaching overtime at times. And when someone tells me that I went a little long, I just kind of go along with it. But friends, where's our heart? Where's our heart when we get on to the preacher for preaching over? There was a place where I preached. And the there was they were no elders there. It was just men of the congregation. And and they were trying to find or trying to push me to leave. They wanted me to leave, I believe, because in a, in a men's meeting they they told me that I could that my sermons would be no more than 20 minutes. That's it. 20 minutes. That's all you got. And you know, there was a couple of families that came up to me and asked me after the first week, or the second week rather, uh, why my sermons are so short. And uh, I told them. And, and the people were telling me, I need more than 20 minutes. I, en I enjoy studying God's Word. Well, I don't have to answer to it, but I did what they wanted. I, I kept my sermons 20 minutes. And I did not stay there very long because it was, uh, it was clear what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to leave. But I, I didn't leave uh, right away, and, and I was asked to leave a few weeks later. You know, in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, the psalmist begins the book of Psalms by, by writing these words, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Notice that. That a person that loves God's word will meditate on it day and night. Another thing that should make us happy is that every day, that we we walk uh, walk in this life, we know that we can be rejoiceful and be happy because God is there. Psalm chapter one eighteen verse twenty four. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day that we wake up. Yes, even tomorrow morning when you wake up and the ground and maybe covered with snow. You should rejoice and be glad in it because the Lord gave you another day. Now, I know there's some of you that won't. But, friends, think about that beautiful blanket of snow. How beautiful it is. How fresh it looks. The air is clear when you walk out. Rejoice in every day that you get because not everybody is so lucky to get another day on this earth. What else can you name of things that make you rejoice? Think about these things. Ponder on these things. Remember these things. Especially when we begin to feel unhappy. You know, it may be hard at times to see the sunny side on life, but there is a song that, that is out there. It, it was sung or recorded or, and written by the Carter family. But it's it's even though it's uh, it has instruments in it. Uh, I like to read the words because of the words that give the, the words give us a little bit of encouragement. Notice the words of the song, "The Sunny Side of Life." There is a dark and troubled side of life. There is a bright and sunny side too. Though we meet with the darkness and strife, the sunny side. We also may view.
Keep on the sunny side. Always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way if we keep on the sunny side of life. Well, this coming Wednesday, Lord willing, uh, we will continue with another segment of the idea of happiness. But I hope that the, this lesson that we, we picked up on Sunday evening, uh, I mean, yeah, last Sunday evening and then uh, Wednesday and now tonight has helped you uh, in making that decision that I'm going to do my best to keep looking on the sunny side of life. Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the time that we can come together as a family and study that word. Dear God, I, we pray that we will be strengthened and edified, that we will look to you for the guidance that we need and we look to your word. And, and Father, we pray that we will continually reach out to you in prayer, knowing that you hear our prayers. Father, we ask for safety tonight as the weather begins to get bad. We pray that there will be those that are traveling will be safe. They will be able to get home safely. Father, we also pray for all of our members who are sick and shut in. And Father, we especially are mindful of the those that have lost their loved ones this past week. And we ask for you to give them comfort. Father, we ask you to forgive us where we have sinned against you, where we have missed the mark, where, where we fail you. Help us to realize our mistakes, to dust ourselves off, and to say, I'm committed today to live better for you than I did yesterday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great evening, folks, and we will uh, talk with you, study again this coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Have a great evening.